Okay, so this would be some help for 2.4. Uh, we're looking at 7, 8, 10, 11, and 13. Um, and as we look at that, a uh, couple things to keep in mind. Uh, it's all about drawing the, di the free body diagram, trying to really label and make everything X and Y coordinate related, um, and then just looking for balances, uh, forces. Um, that's really where equilibrium is going to have a lot to do with it. Uh, later on, I think question number uh, 11 and 13 have to do with springs. Um, 10, 11, sorry, 10 and 11 are spring related, and then um, 13 is uh, the air resistance or the drag. So I'm actually going to look at question number uh, 8, probably the more complicated equilibrium problem, and then I'm going to look at question number 11, uh, one of our spring problems. So if we're looking at question number 8, um, okay, we have a drawing that I'm going to try to copy. Okay, um, we have a, a 31 degree angle there, and um, this is a 15 degree angle there. Um, the legs are applying a force upward. There's tension in the rope upward. And of course, we know that from this position, uh, gravity is pulling down. Those are just the basic information from the drawing. Then we look into the actual question. It says that her mass is 52 kilograms. Um, and the uh, question is, find the tension in the rope and the force that the Mount Clare must exert with her feet on the vertical rock to remain stationary. Assume that the force is exerted parallel to her legs. Also assume uh, negligible force exerted by her arms. Uh, so essentially, she's not pulling herself up. It's the rope. She's just hanging out. Um, what is the minimum coefficient of friction between her shoes and the cliff? Now, that's a, a separate question we're going to get into in a second. But first, let's find the tensions here and, uh, and look at it from that perspective. So the first thing I want to do is I want to break everything into x and y components. So I'm actually going to take this um, vector here of her legs. I'm going to push it that way. Um, there's a reason behind that, and it has to do with how I break it apart. Okay. I know that's a 15 degree angle, so this would also be 15 degrees. Um, and that being 31, I'm going to break this into uh, its components. So let me draw. Okay, this is the, the rope pulling up, and uh, this would be her legs pushing out and up. Okay, so those are our two component chunks. Um, we do need to know the angle. Um, now, because in this top one up here, because uh, the vertical is parallel to the vertical, we know that this is the 31 degrees. Okay, that might not be the best one to break this down off of. Um, typically, we like to use the x component one. So I'm going to the one that's parallel to the horizontal. So I'm going to come up to this angle, which would be 59 degrees. Now, the reason I want to do that, let me get off of there. It has to do with when I come into this and I try to find um, these component vectors. Let's go back to red. For this component right here to be the um, cosine, it needs to be that this is also the adjacent side. So this has to do with saying the x is always the cosine and the y is always the sine. It has to do with that. All right, so this is what I know is that t in the x direction, okay, it has to cancel out any other x direction motion, okay, which would be, um, we're going to call it uh, force applied in the x direction. So that's how much her legs are pushing off. So what we do know is that the force she pushes with her legs in the horizontal must cancel uh, with her tension in the rope in the x direction. So we know that tension in the x direction will equal her applied force um, in the x direction. So I don't know that we have enough information on either of those to figure that out right now, but we do know about the y information, some extra stuff. Specifically, we know that um, her legs pushing up and the rope pulling up have to add up to her weight being pulled down. You can see the two up vectors, and then we have our downward vector. So if I think of like the sum of the forces 
in the y direction, I'd have tension in the y direction plus the applied force in the y direction minus her weight must equal zero, or that the tension plus the applied force would equal her weight. Um, now we know that her mass is 52 kilograms. Do we know anything else about the rope? Um, find the tension in the rope, okay, and the mountain climber must exert. Okay, so this is again one of those problems where we have two sets of equations. I can't actually solve these in terms of TY and FAY because I don't have enough information. I'm missing both of these. So what I'm going to have to do is talk specifically about the tension on the angle, okay? So I'm actually talking about the angle tension and same thing, the angle along her legs, the actual applied force. I can't break them down into the X components and Y components the way I want to, at least not directly. I do have that TX is equal to FAX. If you remember that TX is the cosine, we would have the TX is the same thing as the tension overall, not the X or Y component, but the total tension times the cosine of the angle, which we're using the 59 degrees. And that would equal the, the, the force applied by our legs, okay, but not in the X or Y component, but just the applied force times, again, the cosine of its angle, which is 15. Now, the reason this matters is that's something that I can write here. I can do a T and an FA as well in the Y direction. Instead of doing Y direction, I could just do com the, the composite. So over here, instead of writing TY, I'd write T sine of 59 plus, instead of FAY, I just do FA sine of my 15. And I know that that will equal mg when I push the mg over. Okay, so the reason this matters is now I've got FA and T the same in both sets of equations. So this can be a substitution that, that makes it manageable. Um, okay, so if we come back and we start looking at how do we solve this? We're going to need our calculator. We're going to need to run some numbers. I'm just going to grab a, a classroom calculator rather than putting it up on the screen. Grab that real quick. and We'll make a, a couple of quick calculations, making sure we're in degree mode. Um, specifically, if I solve this for uh, T, it's FA times the cosine of 15 over the cosine 59. If you could just divide, right? Divide that over. And so if I take that cosine 15, cosine 59, cosine of 15 divided by cosine of 59, when I'm in degree mode, gives me T equals 1.875 FA. So that means there is more tension in the cable than there is in the uh, the applied force that she's putting in. So we know that we're getting a little bit more out of that. I'm just looking at something in the book. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and so what we're going to do here is we're going to plug this information into the other equation for T. And so we're going to end up with 1.875 FA applied force times the sine of 59 plus F A sine of 15 should equal her mass, which we said was 52, times gravity 9.8. So in solving this, we're going to clean up our, our numbers here. Um, and the way we can do that is we can multiply the 1.875 times sine of 59. That's going to give us 1.607, but we need to add also this. Um, so I guess we'll maybe put that 1.6076 FA plus, and the sine of 15 is 0.25882 FA, 
equals and 52 times 9.8 is 509.6. What we're really dealing with here is that we're allowing her applied force plus the rope to balance everything out. So it becomes more complicated when we do it that way. If we combine the two of these, and I'm using my calculator with, with as exact of values as I can so that I don't have any rounding errors. So if my answer is just slightly different from what you write down, uh, understand I'm just being really, really um, paranoid. Um, FA equals the 509.6. And so I take my 509.6 and I divide it by my 1.866. And I get that the applied force that she has to use her legs to do is 273 uh, newtons. Now I also want to know how much tension there is in the rope. Well, I could take that answer and plug it in over here, times it by 1.875, and get a tension of 512 newtons. Okay. Now there was a second question, a follow-up. It talks about how much uh, force of friction there has to be between um, her feet. Or what's the coefficient of friction? So here's here's the deal. Her feet are applying. Okay, they're applying a, an outward force away from the rock, but they're also applying an upward force. If that value, that force upward okay, from her legs is bigger than what friction can produce, uh, then we have a problem. And so we can figure out what Fy is by using Fa sine of theta. So this is the part where, <coughs> excuse me, her feet are, are, are pushing her up. But that means her feet are going to slide against the rock if there's not enough friction. And you can imagine, you know, her feet against the rock. She's pushing, she, you know, she's pushing her body up, which is going to mean that her foot's going to want to slide across the ground. Now, friction is going to help her do that. That's the force of friction. Okay. So her force of friction has to be big enough uh, to, to, to account for what she's getting. And so we have the applied force which we learned was 273 times the sine of 15. This would have to equal the force of friction. Okay. Now we know the force of friction. Um, it's going to be perpendicular um, to the surface. And that's going to be in line with how much she's pushing out. That would be FAX. So the normal force here is actually how much she's pushing against the wall or off the wall, which would be, instead of Fn, we're going to use Fa in the x direction times um, mu s. And if we get that right, then we should be able to figure out uh, what mu would have to be. So Fax is 273 times the cosine of 15 and we times that by mu s. This is a pretty complicated problem. Again, it's not going to be on the test, but it's just fun to see how um, we can solve things that are a little bit more complicated and bring all this stuff together. So if we take our 273 over 273, that's going to cancel. We end up with a sine of 15 over the cosine of 15. And we end up with a mu sub s of 0.2 six, eight. All right. That's a long problem. I'm really more concerned about do you understand how to, to break stuff apart and talk about those independent components where FAX and TX have to be equal because they're opposing each other. Yeah, we did most of the work in terms of T and FA, but we had to understand how, they, how to build those equations based on what cancels out. All right, let's look at uh, where we're going to go from there. I think we do uh, question number, I think it was 10 or, or was it 12? Let's see. Wrong book. Okay, here we go. Um, the other problem that we wanted to look at uh, was number 11. Uh, we've got a bungee jumper, 80 kilograms. It's going to jump off the bridge. Rubber bungee cords expand like a large spring uh, to bring them to a stop. A bear who's standing at the bottom at the river puts his paw out and stops the jumper from going back up with the bungee cords. Um, if the bungee has a spring constant of 20 newtons per meter 
and they stretch 50 meters during the jump, how much force does the bear have to apply? This is actually a really cool question. So you've got, this is your jumper. Okay, force is acting on the jumper. Obviously we have the force of the bungees pulling up. Uh, we have the force applied by the bear. Okay, I'm gonna, I know. I have FB up there, that's bungee. And down here I have FA, that's the bear. But I also have to account for the fact that, you know, there is MG pulling down as well. So the bear doesn't have to do all the work. Because if you think about it, when you stretch the bungee that much, I mean, it's, it's stretched and it's going to bring you back up, but it's not going to bring you back up to where you were before. It's still going to be stretched pretty heavily because of your weight until you get off of it. And so the bear here has some help. Okay? If we want to know how much um, the bungee cord applies force, we use uh, Hooke's Law, which is K delta X. K being the stiffness constant, I think we were told that it was 20. Uh, newtons per meter, and we times that by the distance that it was stretched, which was 50 meters, to get a 1,000 newton force. It's called the restorative force. It wants to pull back to where it was before. We don't know how much the bear has to apply, but we do know that the mass of the jumper was, I believe, 80 kilograms, and we know gravity, of course, is 9.8. Well, 80 times our 9.8 comes out to 784 uh, newtons, 784 newtons. And essentially what we're doing is a sum of the forces problem. I mean, I typically most people will see this and not actually write it all out, but we have the force of the bungee minus the force of the bear minus mg. And because they want them to hold still, we assume it will equal zero. Well, the force of the bungee is 1,000 minus the bear effort minus 784 has to equal zero. Well, if I bring the bear over here, it's going to become a positive, right? Because it was negative. So the force applied by the bear has to equal the difference between 1,000 and 784, which comes out to 216 newtons. So if you wondered why it wasn't 1,000, well, you've got gravity. It's helping the bear. It's a lot harder for us to get up than it is for the bear to keep us down. So. You know, that's, that's a totally different thing. Okay, um, that being said, hopefully that's enough to help you and get you through some of the harder questions. Good luck.